This presentation of the Savage Nation is brought to you by Inheritance Funding Company. Hi, it's Roger Hedgecock. Join me evening starting at 7 right after Savage on Talk 910 KNEW. Warning. The Michael Savage Show contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Here is Michael Savage. Friday on the Savage Nation, and today I'd like to look back at the topics that I covered throughout this week and revisit some of my thoughts on each of them. First of all, on Monday I talked about Barack Obama on his trip to Russia, doing what he always does on these foreign trips, foot kissing and kowtowing. Let's listen. Savage. Our president is on another trip. Uh, he has solved all of the problems in America, as you know, so therefore he is now uh, over in Russia. That is so good. That is so great to see that we have a pacifist socialist in the presidency uh, who will soon in his own mind be president of the world and then uh, the universe. I don't know how he's getting away with this. I just don't know how. He's outright supporting the communist dictator of Honduras while the people are screaming for democracy. He uh, doesn't help them in Iran. North Korea fires missile after missile. He and his minions in the military stand down and do nothing. He is the most fiscally irresponsible president in history, according to Kevin Hassett, a real economist in Bloomberg News. And yet, not a peep comes out of the media about this. I am sitting and watching the United States of America being taken apart at the joints. How about you? Having a nice time? Obama takes a trip. We don't know what he's on, but he's certainly on a big ego trip. We still, in essence, have a peacetime military because we are, in essence, at peace. After all, the men are only dying in Afghanistan. North Korea is firing missiles into the uh, into the ocean. Uh, Iran is threatening to blow uh, Israel and then the United States off the map. The world is in upheaval, and Obama doesn't care. He doesn't know that. He assumes it's still the University of Chicago and that he can go to another seminar on a peaceful world without nuclear weapons. Savage. Now on Tuesday, the media were obsessed with the death of the pill-popping, king of pill-popping, Michael Jackson. Why did the media elevate this sicko? Well, let's flash back to Michael Savage's comments on Tuesday, please. Savage. What I want to do today is cover some American music that's great rather than the garbage that Michael Jackson produced for children really i mean children liked him i don't know of any adult who ever listened to him he was histrionic danced around on the stage i have no idea where the uh, worship comes from i had enough of it i said the same thing about the ronald reagan memorial i said the same thing about the uh president ford memorial that went on for weeks i feel as though i'm living in a nightmare but this has gotten worse and to think who's given the eulogy al sharpton the man who brought us deaths at freddie's fashion mart the man who invented uh, the fact that there was, in fact, no attack upon Tawana Brawley, who smeared herself with feces and said that a detective uh, smeared her with feces and it was white racism. He's giving the eulogy, quite fitting, actually. Now, if you think this is a racist rant, that's because your mind is perverted and distorted. Because I'm going to play the music of some black composers and musicians who are actually great. Let's, for example, begin with John Coltrane with Giant Steps. He has great music. Not from Michael Jackson, by the way. And this is something that Sharp Tongue or the others wouldn't even understand. 
here's another piece of great music by a great American, African American at that. Duke Ellington, take the A train. Listen to this one. Everyone knows this. No eulogies for Ellington when he died. You can feel the train rocking. If you've ever ridden the A train, you can feel it rocking. That's great music. Now, of course, he's another African American. I'm sure he would turn over in his grave if anyone referred to him as an African American back in the time, 1967. Here's Jimi Hendrix all along the Watchtower. You want to hear great music? Listen to it. How's that? No memorials for Jimmy. We can add this to the uh, Cesar Chavez Day next, the Michael Jackson Day, a day that everyone in America must don a white glove or be arrested by the new federal police. Uh, how about a woman, a fabulous country and western singer, also authentic American music, Tammy Wynette, Stand By Your Man. How about this? I guarantee you this is fairly well known amongst people who are over the age of nine. All right, country and western. Now, how about some real American music along the lines of what we just heard from a different sort of composer? We heard George Gershwin's American in Paris. How about Fanfare, The Common Man uh, by Aaron Copland? Hear of him lately? No, that's so beyond the Al Sharpton crowd. We wouldn't even expect. Break that record. Break that record. That would cause riots, I'm sure. How about Gershwin's American in Paris with the sound of taxi cab when he hit Paris? Isn't that kind of interesting and quaint? Quaint music. George Gershwin, never heard of him. Didn't wear white, one white glove. So far as we know, he didn't molest young boys. But then again, hey, it was a different time. He was a man who composed for the greatest generation. You might say that Michael Jackson entertained for America's worst generation. You might say that, of course. You wouldn't want to be heard saying it, but you could say it. All right, let's let it go. I gave you, I made my point. Savage. Wednesday was the day our not-so-fearless leader, Barack Obama, sold out to Vladimir Putin by agreeing to give up a third of America's nuclear arsenal. Guess who's laughing in his sleeve? That would be Putin and every Russian. Play a little bit of my monologue from Wednesday. Savage. Ladies and gentlemen, we are witnessing the sellout of the United States of America. While you, you schmucks, were dancing to Michael Jackson's funeral, your president, Barack Hussein Obama, held a fire sale of our nuclear defenses in Moscow. Make no mistake about it, this is unprecedented. We are putting ourselves at risk if we permit this to go forward. Now, I'd like to ask you a question. Does the president have the sole authority to act on the behalf of the American people without any congressional approval? Are you living in a dictatorship or are you living in a democracy? I'll let you decide. Barack Obama holds a fire sale of America's nuclear defenses in Moscow by Gerald Warner. It is from the Telegraph blogs out of England. It's up on michaelsavage.com. Combined with this, though, is a ray of hope. The ray of hope comes from the Rasmussen poll. The Rasmussen poll says Obama's approval index drops to all-time low. So apparently the American people are not gulled by the schmucks and the vermin in the media. The daily presidential tracking poll shows only 32% of voters approve of Obama's performance. Did you hear that? 32%, not 60% as Wolf Blitz and that vermin talks about. Savage. Yesterday, Thursday, was the parade of Democratic fools. Uh, Barack Obama released Iranian terrorists who tried to kill American troops. And the esteemed senator from New York, Charles Schumer, started a Democrat's push for amnesty for 30 million illegal immigrants, saying that they're coming here only to work. Listen to this. Do you actually think any of these people think beyond the media power grabs? I don't personally, frankly. Not at all. But it gets worse now. It gets worse now. We go now to the bottom of the barrel on the demon cat side. The most extremist of them all is our Senator Chuck Schumer, who wants to pass amnesty for illegal aliens and jam it down your throat. Listen to clip, 20, uh, clip 02. And the very first thing I'll tell the president is something that I think will sound familiar. 
When the President asks me whether Congress can pass comprehensive immigration reform this Congress, I will smile and say, Mr. President, yes, we can. <laughs> Isn't that nice? Well, Schumer, let me tell you something. You're not only a fool, you're a liar. You're a liar because you have the nerve to say that they come here not for the benefits, but for the jobs. What jobs are they coming here for, Schumer, you liar? Listen to clip four. I will tell you that the employer sanction parts of the bill, which are the most important to stopping the flows of future illegal immigration. Oh, yeah, in the because future. Because despite what some yeah, might right, say, you're oh, lying the pig. Immigrants are, the illegal immigrants are coming here for benefits. They're not. They're coming for jobs. Now, wait a minute. We have a job meltdown in America, and this liar from Brooklyn, this liar from Brooklyn says they're not coming here for benefits, they're coming for jobs? Schumer, you're a liar, and let me tell you something, everybody knows it. You're not going to get away with this, Schumer. You may call me any name you want. You may say that commentators are going to try to gin up anger against it. 